Hi, in this video I'm, I'm going to walk you through an example of the slowly changing dimension type 2 example that I blogged about. I'm going to have much more description of this data flow in that blog. So in the description for this video I'll put the links to both the JSON code for this data flow as well as the link to the blog post that walks you through how this uh, slowly changing dimension type 2 works in EDF um, mapping data flows. So what I'm going to do here is just show you it working in action. And let me walk you through a little bit of it first before I, I actually execute it. Now I'm in the data flow debug session. So which means that um, anything that I um, do in here when I look at the data and preview the data, uh, data factory does not write the data and it does not do things like move the files or delete files if you have those options set. You have to be in the pipeline debug and pipeline execution for that to happen. So when I switch over into showing you this working uh, fully, I will then switch over into um, the pipeline mode. Let me first check to make sure I have my file available. This is not the one I want, so I'm going to, uh, let me quick pause and put the file in there that I want. All right, that's better. So I have two different employee um, files. So this example is an example of, a dimension, of an employee uh, dimension uh, with employee IDs. And then, um, so employee ID is the business key and then surrogate key I create for each employee. So I have two different files that you can see the um, changing attributes and the changing members within the table. And this is employees one that have an employees two. Now to read those files every day, the way that you would execute this within Data Factory is um, you can use this, the technique that I have um, in this um, data flow, which is that the data set that defines where the file is located is really just a pointer, uh, a link service to blob, and it just points to my container. I actually specify the files within the source options, and I use a folder path of sample data emps today, and then star.csv, so any CSV that lands in that folder every day, no matter what it's called, I'll pick it up and, and process it. So it gives you much a lot of flexibility, and you don't have to have specific names for your files for this to work. And then when it's done, the typical, a classic pattern would be to either delete or move that file. In this case, I'm just deleting the file when it's done, so I don't reprocess that same file then subsequently in subsequent executions. All right, so it's a CSV file coming in, then down here is my other source, which is the existing rows within the DIM employees a member uh, table. And so my um, this is my data set, and my table is called my table is called dim emp. It's a SQL database table, and uh, there really aren't any other settings on here. Although you, I'll show you the contents, which is empty right now, so that the table is empty. In the uh, the attributes that I'm storing in my dimension table are the uh, business key, the surrogate key, region status, emp function, level, and role, start date, and end date. Those are all attributes that I, that I care about to make this a changing dimension, all right? So I have an exists within my data flow that looks for any changes to those attributes that indicate that there was a change. Is current and process timer are flags and values that I set as derived columns within my data flow to track the ETL and the processing of my ETL, which is a common practice that I do to, within my ETL packages. So here you can see the lookup ID. So the top row within uh, my data flow is where all the new rows will come in. And so my lookup is against uh, the incoming data to the existing data within the member table. So if these don't match, then it's pretty straightforward that I'm going to do a new. So let's just focus on that for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the attributes of uh, making it current. And I'm also going to set a surrogate key. So my surrogate key uh, process within this data flow is to use a hash. So I'm using CRC230. Uh, CRC32 against a couple of fields. Now, um, I've already had some folks comment on my blog post saying that they'd like to see me using an incrementing surrogate key value, and I'll show you how to do that with lookup and surrogate key in a subsequent um, a blog and video. But for this one, I'm just using the hash, and then I'm writing that all out with an insert because these are just going to be inserting because they're brand new, so I do not need to worry about any updating of existing um, or you know, resetting any of the existing rows to uh, being not current, so I just do insert. And I think that, that should pretty much be all I want to show you for that. So read the blog post for more detail. Let's go ahead and run it. So I have my pipeline here, which is a very simple pipeline. In production, you likely have more activities on this than just the data flow, but uh, just for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to execute that here. So I'm going to run it in debug mode because I have my debug um, turned on. And what this will do is this will use an existing warmed up cluster and we'll be able to execute this uh, this pipeline right now. So it's going to take about two minutes to process all this and get it loaded into the table. So let me go over to my management studio 
and we'll execute and no rows yes let's just do a pause and I'll come back in about a minute okay so about a minute has passed and you can see when I select from my employee table I now have the rows from my source in there and the process time is uh, UTC and it is actually the correct time stamp uh, on there so that's all good and I got all the attributes loaded and all the rows loaded that I want to and we're about a minute 20 and so this is just finishing up the processing of that now it'll also have happened because it processed the file as the file will be deleted when it's done so my folder should now be empty which means I can now bring in my changed data now that I have my original uh, I have my um, you know everything went through the new um, stream part of the flow and so now we can show you what happens when you have updates so let me put in uh, my file number two different employees and so again a different file name but it's okay because I have the wildcard in my path so it'll pick up this file when I run it again so no change needs to occur to the data flow you just run it again in the pipeline but first let me show you what happens a little bit on the update so I have right here a conditional split the conditional split is just reading the values returned from my lookup so what's going to happen is is current so my pipeline is done so is current is a value that is only present in the database not in the incoming um, file because the file is just employee records. So if the is current is not null, and it could be any value, zero or one, as long as it was present, that means that that row already exists or that employee ID already exists in the database. So you need to update. And there are two different things you need to do when you update with an uh, SCD type two, which is that I first need to write my new row with a new set of attributes. Then I need to go back and change the existing um, uh, the existing row for the employee ID without changing those attributes. All I need to do is on the existing one, I'm going to set some inactive fields. I'm going to change the um, inactive, uh, sorry, the is current to zero, so it's inactive. And then I'm also going to uh, set the, uh, the current processing time and just the end date and status so that we know that's inactive. Everything else will stay the same, so I don't change the interesting, the most important attributes. You don't want to change those. You want to keep the history. So I sync that as an update. So setting is allow updates. You have to have an alter row before your updates. And so my update is anything that makes it down all the way down here is just true. So it's going to be an existing row. So you want to update it. The other thing I need to do is up here on the top level is I need to create a new version of that record. So this one's going to have is current of one. And it's going to have all the new attributes that were found. So the new attributes to do a check here to see which attributes, uh, if any of these attributes changed. So I'm saying that I'm looking for region, role, level, and status. You can also use hashing if you like to hash rows and pick the columns you want to track there. That works just fine as well. All right, that's good enough. I think from this point, let me just go ahead and run this. So we have the new file in place. This is done. So all you got to do is debug. No change is needed to your data flow. And this would be essentially the way you run this every day. You then go ahead and um, just execute this from a schedule. So you uh, would go into the pipeline, add a trigger, do a new trigger, and you can uh, you know, execute this to run every day every hour or whatever you happen to, to choose. The whole scheduling is available to you here in ADF pipelines. <clears throat> so close this. Uh, let's see, let that run. Let's take a look again at our current set of values. These were the initial new uh, rows. Now we're gonna do some updates. And so let's come back and take a look at that uh, one minute later. Okay, so we've had about a minute pass by. Yeah, that's good. Let's take a look at what we have first. Let's see if our file is processed. We can go to <clears throat> back to my storage explorer or I guess this would be my uh, storage blob within the portal refresh and see that yep employees 2 was processed that's gone let's go look at the database and yep we see that the rows have changed so what we have is some new rows we got um, let me actually order this by um, have an order by amp ID oh, I do have order by amp ID take that back so that's fine. So we have it ordered by amp ID. So we can see that we do have a row with, uh, we have two rows with the same amp ID. So one should be active and one is inactive. That's very good. And the difference is that this flag changed on that row. So that worked just fine. And the other is these two were new and they were added and they have the right processing time. The ones that didn't change, they did not update the processing time. And we have just one that's current for each ID. So that's how it works. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.